Welcome to the Inside Silverstone podcast, a business-focused podcast covering all things tech, engineering and innovation. Hosted by me, Chris Broom, a huge tech, motorsport and gaming fan, and also the owner of Longhurst, a firm of lifestyle financial planners and independent financial advisors located in Silverstone, Northamptonshire. This is a series of unscripted and unpolished conversations with leading business owners, thought leaders and high-tech talent where we discuss their experiences within the Silverstone business and motorsport region. We will also be asking them to share their knowledge, insight and their thoughts on the future just for you. If you're looking to learn more about the Silverstone high growth region and commercially connect with like-minded peers, you've definitely come to the right place. Welcome to Inside Silverstone. Welcome to the next edition of Inside Silverstone. My name is Chris Broom and I am your host today. I am delighted to welcome to the show for a first time, Ben Peters from Roadwise. Ben, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, Chris, thank you for having us. It's uh, it's exciting to, to be here, so thank you for having me on. Absolute pleasure. It's about time we got you on. We, we met <laughs> many moons ago through a mutual connection, Mike Hayward, who will be listening to this. So, Mike, thank you for Indeed. introducing us. And we were introduced at the MK Dons because Mike and Woodfine solicitors occasionally take us to, to watch MK Dons win or mostly lose when I go and uh, and that's where we met so it was about time we got you on to talk all about Roadwise. Um, before we get into Roadwise and the cool things that you're doing um, let's just have a bit of narrative about your background and a little bit about you um, and as I do as is customary I go onto LinkedIn and I have a quick scan down the CV list to see if anyone's done anything interesting in their life or career and I see that your opening gambit is you were or still are or whatever a ski instructor. Yeah, uh, well, still am. No, the, the qualification has lapsed, but hey, uh, like to think I've still got it though, right? Um, yeah, ski instructor back in, what was that, 2000, 2001, 2002. Um, skied from a very early age and kind of uh, left school, not really sort of knowing what I wanted to do. And uh, at that time, uh, the snow zone, Milton Keynes was uh, under construction. Yep. And thought, hey, so it seems like a cool place to go and work. And whilst working there, did my qualifications, uh, took the qualifications abroad, did a little bit of uh, instructing, did some of my qualifications abroad actually in, in France. And uh, the last the last bit I did was in New Zealand in 2004. So I haven't technically taught any skiing for, for quite some time now. But a recent visit to the snow zone uh, prove that I've still got the legs for it and it's still sort of links and turns so I'm quite pleased about that. Very good well I, I learned to snowboard at the snow dome I don't know maybe a decade plus ago right, for, okay. a, a long 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 time ago um, and then uh, and then uh, my good lady started to ski a couple of years ago so I thought Brilliant. well I'll learn to ski so we can ski together because that's Brilliant. what you do when you're in love and uh, <laughs> and so I, I learned to ski up at the ski dome as well last year or the year before and uh, uh, which one did you find easier? Um so um i found skiing once i got skiing and it took me uh by the end of our first holiday away uh you know three days three or four day trip that we did by the end of that uh that three or four days my body just completely got it as in i i, I, I was stopped yeah. thinking about it and it was just happening and mm -hmm. uh and so i i think i enjoy skiing more uh, and, and i think i can have more fun with it um where boarding Boarding's like hard work. I mean, you you got you, you to put you know got to get up and down all the time to put the board on and off. You're constantly riding edges, and it's 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 a, for me anyway. It's a lot more energetic and hard work. So there's nothing quite like catching that back edge on the downhill either, is there? And smacking your head on the Honestly, long way down so, on, a, on a snowboard. The first time we went skiing, as I said, <laughs> on the last run, I got far too cocky. Always the last run on the last day that you have the accidents, and I was I got so cocky, I ended up literally front flipping on the skis, and I nearly dislocated my thumb. And and I, and I came away still laughing and thinking that was just a phenomenal trip. Always better to do that on the last day and the first day, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we digress. This isn't a skip. Sure, yeah. So let's talk about Roadwise. So basically, uh, for those that don't know you yet or Roadwise yet, what, mm. what what's the business? What are you guys doing? Okay, so Roadwise is a, a technology business that operates uh, predominantly in the in the transport space. Um, my background that led to this point was within the, the telematics industry and the uh, telematics technology for those that don't know is essentially a connected vehicle technology that enables operators to track their vehicles, see where they've been, historic journeys, 
um, looking at vehicle data, so diagnostic trouble codes, CO2 emissions, but also how well that vehicle is being driven from a, uh, a human interaction perspective, so speeding, cornering, braking, acceleration events. Um, and from my experience of working in that, that industry, they sort of identified some of the frustrations of the operators working with that technology and other technologies across, uh, across a fleet uh, and saw an opportunity to create a technology that brings those different data sets to, together. So that's what we set out to do um, in, in our kind of first iteration as, as Roadwise was build a technology platform that enables operators to plug all of their technologies into. So um, telematics, tachograph, fuel cards, service and maintenance data insurance claims. So that's what we built uh, as, as a Roadwise platform was a data integration solution. Um, but the, the primary driver for doing what we do is to help operators uh, improve the, the current position in terms of risk profile of the fleet to reduce accidents, improve the safety of, uh, of their drivers, which then leads to um, benefits in terms of reduced costs, operational overheads, uh, reduced claims experience with the insurance. Um, and once we've sort of built the, the technology platform, we sort of got to a point where we were like, well, there's a big so what? Well, okay, we, we can do data integration, we can make uh, dashboards that that make sense and they, mm. they, they present data in a, in a format that's easy to interpret and, and use but the reality is nothing changes uh, unless you involve the driver and, and get this data to the driver in a meaningful uh, format uh, that they understand and they also want to engage with um, and so we built a, a solution that enables us to gamify this process if you like uh, and we created something called roadwise rewards so we convert the data into metrics at driver level mm -hmm. and we convert those uh, driver scores into rewards points and we have a whole community portal where the driver can engage uh, with a rewards mechanism um, with a um, whole host of things really uh, wellness content e-learning um, traditional kind of risk assessment uh, type material as well uh, so that's what we do we turn your data into a, a meaningful uh, engagement program and we engage your drivers to help reduce risk um, give them a sense of community and, and help you reduce your operational costs and impact on the environment so how, how has been the engagement so you know so a, a typical driver um, you know so presumably this is sort of haulage driving through to long distance and what have you so yeah. are, are they this is a generic statement so you know are, are they interested in yeah, going onto a phone app or whatever it is to, to see the data and you know what points that they've sort of won. What, how's that been? Yeah, uh, it's been it's been interesting and it's been challenging. Um, one of the challenges that we face is that historically uh, this data may have been used as a more of a beating stick than a carrot. Yeah. Should we say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, there's always a kind of um, perhaps resistance and, and to some degree a resentment around some of this data. Uh, and until we get sort of through the engagement cycle with the driver and, you know, really kind of um, address uh, any of their, their, their sort of fears, their challenges and allow them to question the process, uh, that adoption, uh, we have to sort of hold, hold the hand through that, that process for them to actually understand we're here to assist. We're not here to, you know, it's not necessarily a full on disciplinary cycle. This is yeah, about yeah. helping you improve and, uh, and, and uh, engage long term. <clears throat> and, you know, some of them uh, adopt quicker than others uh, and something that we we sort of we've, we're acutely you know conscious of is that drivers are kind of working in isolation for for long periods of time yeah so actually a lot of them adopt and go oh, actually this is this is giving us a, a, a sort of sense of well-being and, and community and belonging and something that we can actually engage with at any time so whether that's uh, on rest periods in the cab whether that's from the comfort of their own home whether it's perhaps in the office, the transport office environment, they can engage whenever they want. So we're refining and improving that process, but we have been through you know, a number of different challenges. Oh, you've got to cycle. teach your dog a new trick, right? So it's just about, you know, and, and encouraging them that actually, not, yeah, as you said, not to be fearful of it. And, and actually this is not only going to improve your working experience and, uh, uh, but potentially can benefit from it in in other ways as well, you know, uh, through through rewards and, and other things. So yeah, absolutely. It, that, that was one of the things that we were keen to create was a a program that I think it's difficult to create a program that appeals to everyone. I mean, and we have to acknowledge that is that you know it is difficult to get everybody on board and find something that, that fits all personalities. But what we wanted to create was a program that 
you know, gave us you know, the best chance of appealing to as many characters as we can. So the, the rewards portal is set up as a, a, a an incentive program that operates almost like an Amazon website, if you like. You know, there's mm -hmm. different things that you can pick and choose from and how you spend your rewards points, um, including you know, downloading of vouchers or, or, or um, uh, uh, grocery vouchers if required. So can you give us some examples of, and this might seem like such an obvious question to answer, but yeah. but like so some examples of ha ha how this technology, your complete technology package, uh, reduces accidents and saves an organization money in the long run? Yeah, sure. So uh, we can quote figures, uh, proven figures uh, of around 59% reduction in uh, claims. Wow. Uh, that's led to then positive conversations with brokers and underwriters when it comes to their insurance premium renewal. Yeah. 12% um, between eight to 12% saving in, in uh, fuel spend and um, significant reductions in things like speeding events, which in isolation is probably a, 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 you know, not the right kind of data to be looking at. But when we look at it in context with uh, miles driven time in the vehicle, uh, we can prove that it's improving the performance of the fleet longer term. So it translates uh, very quickly into bottom line savings, but the focus is on the individual behind behind the wheel. So it, when you compare us to sort of a perhaps a traditional risk management model, which is more kind of assessment driven, uh, we put the driver first, engage with them, understand more about them as a character and their wellness, to then procure the results in terms of those longer term cost savings and improvements a, a, across the fleet. Um, and probably the the, the one that are, uh, we were most uh, proud of is the one I just quoted there, the 59% reduction in, in claims in, in 12 months of, uh, of working with the, the operator, which then leads to a, a positive conversation with the broker come, uh, come insurance premium renewal. Yeah, sure. What, uh, what's life been like during COVID for, for the business? But, you know, again, a pretty obvious question to ask and an, an obvious answer. But during COVID, the haulage industry, you know, how, how's it all been? Yeah, I, th I think the, the, the haulage industry, um, depending on where you sit within within that industry, uh, some people have gone mentally busy and have maintained sort of peak kind of uh, levels of productivity throughout the whole year. Uh, uh, a couple of customers that went a little bit quieter, um, but then used that time to look at how to implement other efficiencies throughout the uh, throughout the fleet. Yeah. Um, so they reduced their fleet size quite quickly, but then looked at how to utilize software to better manage workload moving forwards and how to optimize um, route planning as, as an example. Um, but we've, we, we've been, we, we actually grew slightly through, uh, through lockdown. Um, we acquired, we acquired a couple of new customers right. and uh, we've got a uh, quite a healthy looking pipeline. So sitting here sort of touching wood and feeling very grateful really of, of, of how we've been able to navigate through, uh, through COVID. And, and I think at the moment we, we're seeing, positive signs across the industry that, that people are picking up and sorry, business is picking up and productivity levels are, are starting to increase. That may be slightly skewed by the fact that we're now in Christmas peak. Mm. Um, so we've got peak on top of peak almost, if you like, uh, for, for some operators. Um, and of course, uh, home delivery in particular, uh, I think has seen significant increases. We've seen courier operations, put significant volumes of additional vehicles on the road and, and looking for, for more drivers. Um, which I think has also helped some of those that have been displaced uh, from from their day jobs uh, during COVID, has given them opportunity to to work in the industry uh, from you know who may have not been uh, inside the industry when the redundancies occurred. But um, as I said that the, the pipeline is looking good. Uh, we're getting geared up to um, raise investment uh, over the next couple of months. Uh, so we're, we're quite excited about the future. It's that very very exciting and so you know on your website you also promote a development team so the roverwise development team so you know who's in that and uh, and what is it yeah so we uh, we partner with uh, paul and richard uh, as our as our development team uh, they've really helped us um pull together how our uh, technology um basically interacts so at any one point we may be working with three or four different apis with any one particular customer yeah. So they've really helped us build uh, the, the, the API integrations and the way that the database works, but then also uh, how we're uh, how our front end interacts with that database. Uh, we've recently just had uh, a redevelopment or a redesign of our of our front end as well. So so what I was keen to do uh, during uh, during lockdown was to improve the user experience. Yeah. So the look and feel, but also how you interact with it and, and, and how uh, the data story is presented. 
Um, and the yeah, the, the team have really helped us uh, yeah, put, pull all of those, uh, the, the aspects of, uh, of that data circle together, if you like. And I suppose one of the challenges that we have as a business is no two fleets have the same technology providers. Well, some of them might do, but you, know, you might have a different telematics provider, yeah. have a different TACO provider, et cetera. So the technologies are the same, but they're provided by different end suppliers. So each time as, as we take on a new customer in these early stages of our journey, we may be starting a new development and building a library of APIs yeah, and, yeah. and the team have really supported that development. Very good. Um, the Silverstone Technology Cluster, remind me, you are a member of the STC, aren't you? Uh, are you we current, no, we are soon to be a member of the cluster. Yeah, so I, was, yeah I couldn't remember. So, so you are, but you are joining. We will be joining, yes. We are joining. Good. I'll, I'll make sure I tell Pim. So, yeah, I mean, you know, so a question would be why are you joining the STC? For, for, so, for those listening to this, the STC is the Silverstone Technology Cluster, which is based in Silverstone Park next to the Silverstone F1 race circuit. So, it's a special community of uh, like minded technology folk from uh, professional advisors through to, you know, businesses such as uh, Roadwise joining us. So, why are you joining it and, um, and why now? Well, to, to be honest, for all of the above reasons you just mentioned, you know, the, the network, the support, um, and to be part of the, uh, of the cluster, I think would, um, I would hope that we can add value and support ourselves. Yep. Uh, but also, you know, as a, as a, as a, young, uh, a young business, we're, we need that support as well. And as I mentioned, we are getting geared up to, to, to raise investment. Um, and as part of that, we, we would be potentially looking at you know, for support from within the group to help us do that in the right way, <clears throat> but also to connect to other uh, other businesses who perhaps have been through that through that journey already. Well, there's there's shed loads. To be fair, there's a, a lot of organisations that and, and individuals who will be definitely willing to give up their time and and and, and experience with uh, with capital raising. And, and clearly, there's a bunch of professional advisors that have also been along that path supporting. So. Perfect. Obviously, good luck with that. Welcome you to to the community once you join it. Um, what about yourself for, for sort of COVID related stuff? So uh, life during COVID and, and life beyond. So how's it all been, and uh, and what are you looking forward to doing the most uh, sort of beyond COVID next year? Well, life, life beyond COVID. Well, I wonder I wonder what that's going to look like. Is it life beyond or life with COVID? Do we just adopt and adapt? Um, life with COVID. What, what I learned, Chris, was that I'm definitely no good at homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've, we've, got, uh, we've got four kids and uh, an age range of 14 to four. Uh, that was quite a challenge for us. So uh, I think we did what sort of 99% of the population did and, and went and bought a bloody big paddling pool. <laughs> yeah. That in the garden and the kids ended up with really good tan. So we're very grateful for all the good weather we had in that, that first lockdown. <laughs> I became slightly obsessed with pool filters as well because the filter our pool came with was absolutely naff. <laughs> I ended up finding myself spending hours going through, you know, what's the best filter for this? Th th these are first world problems we're sharing, right? <laughs> so obsessed with pool filters. Absolutely. Um, uh, and, you know, with, with the... I think something I'd like to reflect on, actually, is, is that, you know, during the first lockdown in particular, uh, was everybody became acutely aware of how important transport is to the local and national economy. Um, uh, and it always has been a massively important part of our economy. You know, things don't move without some form of road uh, transport. And I, you know, I think as we navigate through this, this second lockdown, I think there's you know, levels of anxiety definitely exist, uh, but we perhaps know a little bit more about what we're dealing with now. So we're able to, to navigate through this in a slightly different way. But uh, I just wanted to say, you know, huge sort of, I guess, bravo to all the drivers that carried on throughout all of these yeah. lockdowns and all the transport operations that carried on and have, have continued to do a great job and did a, you know, an amazing job before any of this happened, to be honest. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and also, I should acknowledge as well that I'm really grateful that schools are still open in this second lockdown. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I had a client meeting this morning through Zoom and they said the same thing about home teaching, homeschooling and the fact that the kids are now going back. They're like, thank God. <laughs> Brilliant. We, we, we set out with all, all best intentions and sort of three days in, I was like, this isn't, uh, yeah. <laughs> this isn't for it's, us. It's not working for us. We, we know our specialism and it's not this. Yeah, this is it. Right, Ben, before we close off with our, our final um, uh, uh, big overriding question the most important question i'm going to ask you in this interview is there anything else that you want to talk about or share that we haven't sort of touched on 
in the sort of short 10, 15 minutes? No, 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 nothing for me. Uh, again, just to express my gratitude of, of having me on and giving me the opportunity to be part of this. So thank you. Ben, we're all part of the same community and, uh, and we can thank Mike for the introduction. So, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. Pleasure for coming you say on. hi to Mike as well. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, <laughs> right, last question. And so, as I say on this last question, I've spent decades going through a series of learning points and coaching and speaking to mentors around the world to come up with this final question, Ben. So I'm going to give it a little drum roll. Come on. What is the king indeed queen of crisps well as you might be able to tell from my athletic physique i've tried a crisp or two in my time so. and um <laughs> I, i'd have to go for uh something like a brannigan's ham and mustard oh, that's a but, good crisp. but a brannigan's ham and mustard from like the mid 90s the ones where you used to just have one and then your nose was on fire for about three hours afterwards that is, that, they're the ones but no <laughs> one's come back with that we've had i don't know how many of these we've done 30 plus <laughs> these questions no one's come in with a ham and mustard yeah you're right something that's like oh my god there's some serious yeah. heat on that crisp this is it yeah ones that sort of warm you up on a cold day you know oh, yeah we need some of those right now yeah. brilliant answer ben from roadwise thank you so much for coming on we're going to make sure that in the show notes um on by both uh, youtube the podcast and all the websites it's promoted we're going to make sure there's uh, website links to, to roadwise so that okay. folk can obviously read up on what you're doing and clearly get in contact if they're running an organization that would benefit clearly from the technology platform that you provide um uh we'll make sure that the links are all in there uh, everybody listening to this obviously check them out ben Phenomenal to have you on the podcast, finally. Uh, take care for the coming weeks and months and uh, look forward to physically seeing you, I guess it's going to be next year now, probably at the MK Dons with Mike, watching them hopefully win. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah. fingers, crossed. fingers crossed. Ben, thank you so much for coming on the show. No worries. Thanks for having me. Is it, is it too early to say happy Christmas? Merry Christmas. Anyway. <laughs> Merry Whatever. Christmas. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. The Inside Silverstone podcast is produced by the team at Longhurst for the benefit of those with a passion for all things tech, engineering and innovation. For more information, please visit longhurst.co.uk forward slash Inside Silverstone, whilst also remembering to give us a 5 out of 5 star rating on iTunes. Please note that neither Chris Broom or Longhurst work for Silverstone Park, Silverstone Circuit or Silverstone Technology Cluster. <laughs>